Unique New York, unique New York, red leather, yellow leather, a red leather, yellow leather. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. The content continues. A little bit different format, a little bit different content today, as many of you. Um, I live in California and uh, I cannot go to a gym right now uh, out of respect for our government demands and CDC recommendations, as well as respect for my common man. Um, so, the lifting footage is not here, but we had a very interesting talk. I have a brand new podcast. Um, I guess not brand new, but it's new. 50% uh, Facts with the one and only legendary Jim McD. And uh, I think you guys would really enjoy it. I go in depth a little bit and I make it a little bit joking because I'm creating content, but uh, some of the issues we talk about are things I really struggle with. And I've talked about them a little bit here, but talking about my nutritional issues, um, my personal issues with food, what I struggle with, um, we have a, a registered dietitian on that answers our questions about emotional eating um, with our current situation that we're all going through, being kind of stuck at home in, in lack of a better term, and just stressed eating in general, which is something stressed, bored, uh, etc. that I deal with. It's a little bit longer format, so you can check it out on 50% Facts on every platform, Spotify, iTunes, just search that 50, the number, percent. Uh, check it out on Instagram too, that would help a lot. And if y'all are at home chilling, I'm going live probably right now. I'm probably live right now on twitch.tv slash silent mic. I've been streaming a lot of hours. Um, we're all hanging out, we're trying to build community, trying to build some positivity, use a little bit of escapism during times of the, like this um, where we can hang out uh, with like-minded individuals and try to have some fun. So twitch.tv, 50% uh, facts. Enjoy this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. New content coming every Monday regardless. I'm going to try to teach, learn, be here together, stick together. Comment below what you guys want to see coming up. I appreciate you. Sell the mic. I'm out. There we go. Uh, everything's working the way it's supposed to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, we had talked about this topic and, and doing this, this emotional eating topic before everyone was suddenly at home and, um, and fearing for the state of the world. So uh, I guess maybe we want to talk about it in um, kind of two different scenarios, one being like normal life and then um, uh, and then un under situations where people are, are quarantined. I haven't home. left my couch in four weeks <laughs> and my closet's full of Cheez-Its. What do I do? <laughs> okay, so the coronavirus aspect or the working at home kind of aspect. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, a lot of us work at home, and luckily I'm busy, but uh, Jim and I spoke um, previous, and, and, and I'm for sure I'm non-diagnosed, whatever, whatever, but I got issues with food 100%. And, and my parents raised me pretty good. You know, I told Jim, like, my mom's making home-cooked meals that are pretty balanced, some kind of veggie, a little bit of carb, a little bit of meat, you know, like, generally speaking, way better than the, the what I would consider the typical American diet. And still, for some reason, when I'm bored, when I'm anxious, when I'm playing video games or watching a movie, like, my hand needs to be on something snacky, you know? And I think that's yeah. The, so it's asking, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's it's asking yourself why are you reaching for those foods at that time? Is it just a, a pattern, or it's just a regular routine that you're used to reaching for those foods when those times um, of boredom, or like when you're just so used to it, it's become a routine that you're reaching for those foods at those times that you're reinforcing it every day by doing it. And keeping the snacks near you as well, in front of the TV um, or by your computer. Um, do you have a stash there? Is that uh, those are the type of questions? So, uh, so yeah. Typically, what I try to do, and it's uh, maybe not healthy because we go the extreme the other ways. I'll just keep <laughs> no food in my house. That's my that's my answer to this. I'll keep. No, oh, okay. I keep fat-free Greek yogurt in the fridge, <laughs> and and that's it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's it's downhill, yeah. you know, and that's and that and when I try yeah. to do a treat, I've made myself like little rules, and I'm you know I don't have there's extreme more extreme issues for sure. I'm pretty active and generally healthy, but uh, for the sake of the podcast, for right? now, uh, yeah, for now, uh, yeah. you know, I'll do like treats, like little rules where like all right, I'm not gonna buy a pint of ice cream and keep it in the fridge. If I'm gonna get ice cream, I'm gonna go get a scoop at a place, kind of thing, and set these kind of rules up. And I don't know if it's uh you know just a habit of boredom snacking or if it is a deeper root okay yeah so first um by 
not having any treats at home, just having um, more healthier foods at home, you're, you're depriving yourself. And I hear that from a lot of my clients, actually, that they don't keep any of the snacks at home. But when they get a hold of the snacks, either at when they're if they're at work or if they go out, then they go all out on it because they're treating themselves. And that's when the, it, they go a little overboard, um, like getting the extra scoop of ice cream or the extra side with their meal if they go out to eat um, or just getting a few donuts instead of like getting two or three donuts instead of one because they feel like they deserve it and they haven't had donuts for so long or that treat for so long that they just end up eating much more of it than they want. So I do recommend to have um, to have some treats at home, um, some things that you do enjoy so that you're not depriving yourself if you really enjoy those foods as well but making sure to asking yourself before you have them um why are you eating those foods are you eating them because it sounds like for yourself you mentioned that you don't know if you're bored or sad is it do you think about it before you go for it or do you just kind of oh i'll, I'll go for it and then maybe you think about it in retrospect after uh, like a day or two after or like hours afterwards oh maybe i shouldn't have eaten that I mean, I am bored. And, I am bored and sad. I just don't know if it's causing me to eat or not. <laughs> yeah, do you take the time to kind of think about it before you reach for the food? Probably not. And I was telling Jim this too. Is like uh, I'm so busy, and and I'm pretty well educated on nutrition and, and the general scheme of things. I think as well. You know, I've been in this fitness industry for a long time and chatted to a lot of really smart people. But um, obviously our own habits are often beyond our own knowledge mm -hmm. or like they, they, they bypass that. Um, and because I'm so busy, I was telling Jim too, is like, you'll, I'll, I'll just go through the day and it's one way or the other. Just like you said, uh, in your head, you're just like, man, I haven't eaten all day. Like got to get some calories in. I got to work out later. Right. I got a heavy squat session. Mm -hmm. Haven't eaten for six hours. Like, all right, we'll do double portions at Chipotle. Like time mm -hmm. to go in. Um, and it's so easily justifiable, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so maybe it's a matter of also making sure that you're scheduling your regular meals throughout the day as well. Uh, because if you're not, you, you know the we you know the foundations of nutrition. Sounds like you're very educated in that aspect, but applying it for your lifestyle as well. Um, so making sure that you do have those, like whatever is regular for you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner might not be regular for some people. Maybe having a later breakfast or a later snack, and then having lunch, and then having a afternoon snack, and then dinner might be something that you works better for you or um and then making sure that you do follow those having some regiment into your um into your routine as well so you're not overly uh gorging or indulging and getting like two chipotles at uh, a late time in the day because you're so hungry and then you can't lose control because then you order the two chipotles and then maybe going out for ice cream after like you mentioned and then ordering i don't know something like a pastry item after that as well just because you're so hungry you want to uh be fueled for your workout yeah yeah 100 percent. that's probably my number one thing is I, I i don't love breakfast so i don't eat breakfast and then yeah it just trickles down the road H how does someone know in the first place um because e eating is kind of like an intimate thing in a weird way where like yeah you'll share meals with people but that's like on occasion um i, I don't know how the normal like american eats a uh, I have a general idea of like how the normal like competitive bodybuilder eats again because that's the like world we're kind of in. Yeah. But how how do you know if you even have you know a quote unquote issue with any of this to begin with? You know because again like I'm not like uh, overweight or unhealthy. I exercise and you know if I went to a doctor, I'm I'm pretty sure all my stuff would be pretty good. <laughs> you know I'm 31 and and maybe yeah. my BMI is a little heavy because I'm I have some muscle on me. But generally speaking, pretty healthy. But I I just know because I'm uberly self-aware and because i'm in the industry i don't have the best relationship with food <laughs> but how does the normal person know um if, if their habits are, are healthy or not um that uh, so one thing that you can do is actually keep a journal of your food uh for the day so writing down what you're eating throughout the day for i would suggest doing it for a few days including a weekend day and then writing down how you're feeling before the meal and how you feel after the meal and, and write down what you approximately ate during the meal. So that gives you a, a way to evaluate what trends that you have and also see it from a, like a very, uh, close object, like a non-objective, um, so objective perspective. So making sure that, so you're seeing it from not a retrospective, Oh, I think I did this, but it's actually very, um, 
true to the point of how you're feeling at that moment. And because it's also easy to overestimate what you ate and what you think you ate as well or what you didn't eat. Um, so having that kind of a journal would help um, evaluate what you're eating. So you think that maybe um, while everyone is um, <clears throat> at home without a whole lot of other things to do, that maybe stepping up those kind of efforts and um, and basically kind of tracking every day might be a better solution? And not to the point of obsession, but just to the point of... Um, of, of monitoring because we are all definitely less active than we were, you know, a couple of days ago. Uh, so we're not burning as many yeah. calories, so we shouldn't really need as many calories either. Right. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Even things like little things like walking to the bus stop or walking to the subway station. We're not doing those little things anymore. We're just r- working from walking from the bed to our uh, dining table or computer room or anything like something like that. So yes, um, definitely working out doing less activity and especially with the access to food being more available um, just a few steps away now versus um, it's being so convenient that we might be a lot of my clients are actually snacking a lot throughout the day that I'm finding um, because they're bored or they're stressed or it's just right there and it's just so much easier than to plan out their meal so yeah writing it down and taking note of how you're feeling throughout the day um, so you can take inventory of that and then review it after a few days to see if there's any trends and kind of nip that in the butt right away so that you know what's going on and how to plan your meals better since we're all at home and we have access to the food, which gives us that luxury. It's a good, uh, it's uh, both good and bad because it's the luxury of ha- being able to cook healthy meals, but it's also giving us that luxury of being perhaps more, a little bit more lazy and not wanting to cook because we have snacks or we have food available all the time. 